Uh, thanks, Cahir, and thanks, Minister, for taking this, uh, this debate. The Minister knows uh, the importance of this issue for so many young teachers who have decided to give their uh, careers uh, and their energies to the noble profession of teaching. Um, I know in my own case, uh, 12 years ago, when I became a, a primary school teacher 13 years ago, um, there weren't so many people who were willing to take on that, that venture in their careers. It was uh, a difficult uh, thing to find a teacher who wanted to become uh, involved in that career and, and to give up their time and their expertise uh, and, and to involve themselves in that vocation. Uh, and times have changed. And unfortunately, Minister, what I've come across in my own office are quite a number of uh, not just students, but their parents who are extremely anxious about the futures that these young teachers have in our system. And it's not even that they're asking me where are their jobs, because obviously, you know, we have, because of changes in the, in the, um, in the training schedule that we have for, for teachers, the fact that we have new online courses, the fact that the previous government gave that, um, gave that uh, recognition to, uh, to online courses, and, and that's, that's, that's fair enough. We, we are where we are in that regard. We have quite a number of newly qualified teachers, and we don't have the jobs for them. And that's just a plain fact. And that may change over time because the number of students are coming into the system. We have, I think, 70,000 uh, students over the next number of years, which does uh, give some hope. However, it's not just the uh, inability to obtain employment, which is the problem. It's the inability to even get probated. Obviously, after a three-year degree, what you need to do is to spend a year in the classroom, um, not even a year in the classroom, in order to be inspected and to be given uh, what is uh, locally known or, or within the profession known as your dip. Uh, to be properly probated, at which time you can then become uh, a properly, fully permanent teacher. However, these students who, are, who I'm coming across are dying to get into the classroom, to have their class, but they need to be probated in order to, uh, to, con to, to even to seek uh, a a employment uh, within the system. And it is, it is devastating for them to think that they can't even get their foot in the door. Um, and what is happening in the system, and we've spoken about this before, Minister, and it's become a an issue right across Ireland is that when the maternity leave comes up or where a long-term um, uh, substitution is needed, it is not the newly qualified teacher who tends to be the one who is immediately called. It can be a retired teacher, it can be somebody that, that the, the school is well aware of, but uh, the problem is that those new teachers who just need to get in, in order, into the system in order to be probated and have that uh, chance to be effectively more employable are not uh, given that opportunity. So I just wanted to, uh, to put on the record of the House uh, and to discuss with you, Minister, ways that we can get beyond this. Now, it's not just the responsibility necessarily of the Department of Education. Obviously, teacher unions have their part to play. Obviously, uh, management bodies have their part to play. And, and obviously, um, uh, those who oversee those management bodies who are the patrons. I think it is something that everybody would accept is, is not a situation we want to see where newly qualified teachers who are just want to get started on their teaching career can't even get the most basic um, validation of their teaching qualification being probated in a classroom from which they could move on and hopefully get uh, their teaching career started. We obviously are going through difficult times in Ireland. Obviously, we have a difficulty in, um, in, in uh, financing um, the, the type of, of, of teacher body that we need. The vast bulk of what we spend in education is on pay. Everybody accepts that and understands that. But for the dreams and aspirations of these teachers, not even to get started at the very first point on, this, on, on the scale, if you like, Minister, I think it's certainly is something that needs to be addressed. And I'd be interested to hear what you have to say in that regard. Go on, Thank you. Minister. Thank you. Here, here, look, the Deputy has raised a very important issue on probation of newly qualified teachers, otherwise known as NQTs, and I really welcome the opportunity to discuss this matter with him, <clears throat> and indeed with the House. The period between qualification and fully independent practice as a teacher is a vital stage of an NQT's career. It is important that coherent and supportive induction and probation structures are in place to facilitate the NQT's development as a practicing professional during this phase. In Ireland, the Teaching Council is the body with statutory authority under the Teaching Council Act of 2001 for the professional regulation of teachers. All teachers must successfully complete induction and probation requirements specified by the Teaching Council in order to achieve full registration. The work of the Teaching Council, on behalf of the profession of teaching, in the interest of the public, is grounded in the values of professionally-led regulation, shared professional responsibility, and collective professional confidence. The Council is introducing a new model of induction and probation for primary and post-primary teachers on a pilot basis. 
Central to this new model is a period of post-qualification professional practice called Drukud, or otherwise the Irish for Bridge, as people in this room will know. And I look forward to the outcomes of the pilot. <clears throat> the Teaching Council worked closely with the department to ensure that appropriate supports for NQTs are in place. The department funds the National Induction Programme for Teachers, NIPT, which provides a comprehensive and systematic support to all NQTs through workshops, mentoring support at school level, online resources, and professional support groups. I am aware that some newly qualified teachers experience difficulty in accessing teaching hours to complete their probation for registration purposes because they do not yet hold a teaching position in a school. However, measures have been taken by the Department and the Teaching Council to alleviate difficulties faced by new teachers. There are standard arrangements in place for filling of teaching vacancies. In this regard, the, te the Department has directed managerial authorities of schools to recruit unemployed teachers ahead of retired ones in an effort to ease the difficulties for those who cannot find work in the profession. In addition, the JobBridge National Internship Scheme can provide newly qualified teachers with opportunities to gain experience and to undertake the necessary teaching duties to complete the process of probation. The minimum service requirement for, prob for probation purposes in order to secure registration with the Teaching Council was decreased from 170 days to 100 days in the year 2011-2012 year. If a registered teacher is unable to complete the requirements of a registration condition within the specified period, the teacher may apply to the Council for an extension of that period. Each application is considered on its merits, taking account of the stage reached by the applicant in meeting the requirements. In conclusion, I wish to assure the House that every effort has been made to address the difficulties faced by the NQTs while also maintaining professional standards of the teaching profession. <coughs> Um, Gormaghal, if I heard again, and I, I, I thank the Minister uh, for his reply. I just would like him to maybe expand on the uh, response that he's given, me, uh, given to me. The um, Department has directed managerial authorities of schools to recruit unemployed teachers ahead of retired ones. I just get, I'd like to get a sense of, of how successful that has been, because in fairness, I, I, I made this point in my initial address, is that this can be easily tackled with a, a, a cohesive approach right across the education uh, system from all, all people who, who I think would agree that we need to give the best start and the fairest start to those who are starting off in their careers. Uh, so yes, the department has its part to play. Certain teacher unions have managerial bodies and, and patron bodies. But I'd, I'd be interested to hear, uh, Minister, what, uh, what the, the response from that departmental in initiative has been. Um, I think what these, these teachers are, are looking for is, is fairness to get started. Now, I think there has to be a question also asked. Um, is it fair on newly qualified teachers to have the numbers that we have um, in the system every year uh, for jobs that just don't exist? And are we effectively training these young teachers for export? Now, I make this comment not in any way to try and uh, criticize what's happening in the online course. I think you know, it, has its, it has its recognition and you cannot withdraw recognition from, from, from a college that, that has it. But there has to be some mechanism to halt you know, or to have some control of the number of, uh, of, uh, of teachers that are going into the system, because otherwise we're building them up with, with completely uh, false hope. Um, because you know, that has been the situation in, in previous years with the, with the more you know, traditional uh, teacher training colleges we've, we've had in the state. So I'd be interested in hearing your response to that, uh, Minister. What we're trying to ensure across the House and you know, on a non-partisan basis is to ensure that those who have, you know, with excellent leave inserts, absolutely excellent leave inserts, uh, probably the best uh, qualified t um, you know, academic results of that age group anywhere across Europe, have decided to go into a profession which uh, has its, um, you know, its, its, uh, its difficulties and its challenges within it. It's not necessarily overly pay paid in terms of the wider uh, economy, who are, who are trying to get into a classroom and can't even get probated. I think you'd appreciate with me, and I do appreciate you, you accept the, the difficulties that, it's, uh, that, that this poses for people. But if you could just, Response to um, uh, to the question as to how the managerial bodies have um, have accept, have taken on uh, your request from the, the, the request from your department, and also about the oversupply of teachers within Thank the you. system. On the first question, how the managerial bodies and who are the employers? Because we have, as I've said on many occasions, a public-private partnership. To use modern language, 
in our education system between the state on the one hand and the patron bodies stroke the employers. And we can urge and we can request and we can dialogue, but we cannot at the end of the day direct employers uh, who they should take and who they can take. We have strenuously from the time that I became Minister for Education said that in short-term situations where there is a crisis and in isolated parts of the country, it may very well be that the only person available to perform a classroom function is a qualified teacher who is now retired. That's a short-term emergency function. I would say no longer than a week at the outset. I think if you've got structured shortages and structured absences, maternity leave being one of them or compassionate leave or one other, in those types of predictable or extended durations, I think in those circumstances, manager bodies should respond to the calls from the unions and from others to actually give preference for young teachers. Now, that's teachers who are qualified and probated. What the deputy has raised is even more acute. They cannot actually get enough time to go through the period of time, now 100 days, as distinct from the 170. And part and parcel of that needs the cooperation, I think, of the unions in particular to accept into their ranks uh, NQTs who are attempting to get probation uh, without in any way being used as substitutes for full-time teachers. And that's a question of trust. And I have a track record in relation to that when I introduced community employment programs in the past. There was no dislodgement of legitimate employees who were, so to speak, displaced because uh, cheaper teachers or short-term um, NQTs were brought into the system. That's the first point. The second point is relation to supply. Maybe we do have an oversupply, but the, the supply is not just for the national market. Teaching is now a profession in short supply internationally. Britain in particular, our nearest neighbour, has a crisis in southern England. From the wash down, there are just a shortage of highly qualified teachers of which the Irish output, as you rightly said, are very well regarded. Likewise, in the Arab Emirates, there is a demand for professional teachers from the Irish background who are regarded. And that's an option that young Irish citizens may very well want for themselves. And the problem is not necessarily with the online college because some people in their mid-twenties having gone through that initial undergraduate phase, decide that they want to actually convert and to do uh, that conversion course. So th there's a balance between the three, but it is a problem, and I'm glad the deputy has brought it to my attention. Thank you, Minister. The next